We are here with the 2019 Pro Chess League semifinalists, the Button Button Snowballs. Congratulations on making it this far. Welcome to the U.S. Welcome to San Francisco. And we're going to start right out with a tough question. Are the Chengdu Pandas the toughest team you have faced all year? You have to face them in the semifinals in tomorrow's match. Georg, you are board one for your team. Why don't you take that first question? Uh, pick up the microphone, please. Yep. Every time we play, we face our toughest opponent, and in my opinion, that's ourselves. So, so far, we have been doing quite well in that, and I hope you continue. And while you've got the microphone, you've had a very impressive season so far this year. I believe your performance is only behind, uh, in my notes here, Caruana, Wesley So, Maxime Vache, Lagrave. I think you've heard of those names. Uh, pretty elite company that you're in. To what do you attribute your success in this season? Um, I've always been much better in Rapid and Blitz than in Classical, and I have no idea how to fix it, but since we play Rapid, that's okay for now. <laughs> okay, and if you wouldn't mind passing the microphone to Inna, your girlfriend, I'd like to know, you are Swedish, but the team has moved from Stockholm to Germany this year. I know most of the time when people go from Sweden to Germany, it's for the cheap alcohol, but tell me, why did the team move to Baden-Baden this year? Uh, the team moved to Baden Baden because we moved to Baden Baden <laughs> end of last year. So, would that make you and Georg the heart of the team? Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fantastic. Um, now, Georg, you are coming off your event in Granky where you didn't play, I think, to your own uh, standards, but you uh, just won the event last night here at the Mechanics Institute in a three way tie. So, does that put you back on your form a little bit that you had a pretty decent event last night? Yeah, I really think so because. I mean, in Rapid, I most of the time make, well, take my decisions through, through intuition. And it's a very good sign that, first of all, I trust my intuition. I decide quickly what to play and then that I actually played quite well. So you never know what form you're into until you start playing. So I'm really happy that yesterday it seemed like in the last weeks have been forgotten. And also playing, uh, actually the entire team played last night, but also having a good result was Grandmaster Dimitri Kolars. You beat two American Grandmasters last night, Ro uh, Robert Hess and Conrad Holt. Uh, tell us about your play last night. Do you feel like you are on form for the Pro Chess League semifinals? Um, okay, it was good practice. I don't know if I'm in good form. Against Robert Hess, I was very lucky. Uh, in the last game, I was only slightly lucky, so. <laughs> um, but it was good to play with the same time control some games, yeah. Have practice. you been to the U.S. before? No, it's the first time for me. And do you think by beating all these American GMs, you're going to be invited back? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Uh, Alexander Donchenko, tell us about your experience so far in the U.S. How are you enjoying yourself? Am I allowed to be honest? I want you to be honest. All right. Um, so far, the thing I like most is the hotel we stay at and um, the restaurant which we famously uh, visited yesterday, it, it had very good food. Um, the things I don't like so much is, um, well, that first of all, that we had to find that restaurant and also uh, the experience connected with it. I don't know if um, you, uh, you, you heard already, but um, we fell victim to a crime there. Um, many of our things were stolen and of course that's very unfortunate. Um, but okay, I think, um, it's good that we are all in good health and we're able to play and okay, this is just stuff you can replace. Although of course still, uh, it's n not a very good first experience considering I'm also a first timer in the US. Um, but okay, I, I guess you can attribute this just to bad luck. Um, besides that, I think, uh, well, there are, there are many things I recognize from Europe, which I like. <laughs> so uh, it ca uh, ca can't be too bad and uh, we'll see what the next days will bring. Right, and just to let everybody know that you guys were unharmed. Are you able to refocus for the match now? Is that all behind you, or is it still lingering in the back of your mind, Alexander? I would say that um, yesterday uh, it was very difficult to take my mind off things. That's also part of the reason why I played the, um, the, the, the rapid tournament here at the Mechanics Institute. Um, but it, today, after a not-so-good night's sleep, it f uh, feels more like a very unpleasant lost game or something, something that fades slowly into memory, but it's still somewhere in the back of your head. But I think um, it's n not actually, a, nothing so bad really happened. So I believe uh, I will be able to get over it and p uh, play my best chess in the future here. Let's hear from your captain, Paul Trong. What is your main responsibility here to get your team focused for the semifinals and finals? 
Uh, main responsibility is just to make sure that the guys are in a good mindset before the game so they can play their best game. And Georg, this is actually the second time in your life where you've had a Paul Trung managing you. <laughs> I can't be the first person to point out this fact, but uh, do, do you find this uh, ironic in any way? Um, you, you have won some national titles under the first Paul Trung, I should say, right? Yeah, I mean, no one is going to be surprised that I like this Paul Trung more. <laughs> <laughs> and care to elaborate why? Uh, no, it's better not to. <laughs> okay, fantastic. Uh, if you wouldn't mind passing the microphone over to your girlfriend, Anna, I have a question for you. Do you. Does it help a relationship to play with your boyfriend on the same team? Or does it create a little bit of stress on the relationship? No, I think it's more helpful than anything because, I mean, it's very helpful when you trust your teammates and when you know someone really well, that just makes it easier. And we only have two women that uh, qualified or that were selected as one of the qualifying teams to come here. Do you, does chess need more women to become a, a popular e-sport or does it not matter? Is it more about the chess itself? Of course chess needs more women. I mean, that's obvious. Um, but the e-sports are a very visual experience where you're looking at the players on camera. So would chess benefit even more by having more women in e-sports? I think chess would benefit uh, from having more women overall, I mean, both over the board games and for the eSport events. Do any of you watch any female streamers or have any favorite female streamers? Anybody on the team? That's a really funny question with Anna sitting next to you and Alexandra being here as well. <laughs> <laughs> they can't see that on camera, Georg, so. <laughs> okay, well, let's see, they can make a pitch. What makes you the best chess streamer, Anna Rudolph? I don't consider myself the best chess streamer, but thank you for the question. <laughs> okay, well, we'll get back to that later, but uh, I think we can all agree it's great to have uh, male-female tandems when uh, there's chess commentary on. Um, Alexander Donchenko, I understand your dad is pretty decent at chess. I haven't done the full research. I think he's an IM, is that right? Uh, yes, that's correct. And what age were you able to start beating your dad? I would say that was when I was maybe 12 or 13, I mean regularly, because um, he is quite old, but still kept his 23 rating until at least a few years ago, and st uh, now he's still over 2,200. And how old is he now? And now he's 78. So and still over 2,200, and still active? Uh, he's still active. He j just recently played, uh, played an Open in Germany, and uh, he plays a few tournaments a year. So uh, I think he's probably one of the strongest players at this age who are still reasonably active. Indeed, and we're a nine-hour time difference from Germany, I believe. Do you think he'll be able to stay up late and watch some of your later games? Uh, some very smart person fortunately scheduled the tomorrow's match for 10 a.m. So in Germany, that's only 7 p.m. Thus, uh, of course, he'll be able to watch it, and I think he, he will with great pleasure. Fantastic. Uh, Georg, back to you. Tomorrow, you're going to have to play three 2600s. Well, all of you will uh, as part of the Chengdu team. Will this be your hardest challenge of the season? I don't really think in those terms. I mainly focus on myself, and when I'm in good shape, then I'm not afraid of anyone. Dimitri, do you see any weaknesses in the Chengdu Pandas team? Um, we didn't have so much time to prepare yet, but uh, for sure they have some weaknesses. Um, uh, I think the last bot is uh, probably much underrated, and uh, of course a strong player, but um, we of course try to beat him and try to score some points against the Grandmasters, yeah. <coughs> Paul, some people are calling your team the biggest of the underdogs of the four teams. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that, yes. Why is that? Uh, I think uh, across the board we have the lowest aggregate rating. Is that correct? I, I believe think, so. I think I'd have to do the math. Mm -hmm. Actually, you're, you're benefiting from being one of the two teams that's bringing a female, mm -hmm. so I'm not 100% sure of that. But, okay. but the, is, is Mathematics aside, do you generally feel like you guys are the underdog? Yeah, I would, I would say so. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, playing this, what a lot of people think is the strongest team in the first round, is that good to go ahead and try to get them out of the way? Paul again? Um, I mean, we have to face them either now or later, so I mean, we might as well do it earlier. Georg, yours the, uh, your team is the only one that did not come in any capacity last year. You have no players or captains with experience. Do you feel that puts you at a disadvantage in any way? Again, it's not 
really something I think about and whatever it is, we, we just have to deal with it. You all will be listening to music tomorrow. It might be your choice or it might be our selection. Have you guys practiced at all wearing music and headphones to get ready for the actual experience? Anybody would like to answer that? Alexander? Uh, yes, I have pr actually practiced playing with headphones because I used to try it long ago and uh, didn't like it at all. So I needed to get used to it at least to some degree. But I think uh, I will prefer the white noise uh, available because um, I also tried playing with music and that was worse. So I see. And, and uh, you had some thoughts on the music? Uh, yeah, I played all of my matches with headphones and with music of my own choice. So I kind of like that. So it wasn't easier. to prepare for this, it was just because you just enjoy playing with music? Uh, yeah, I mean, all of the approaches like matches. I, I find it to be nice because it cuts out any other kind of noise, because the music is just pleasant in the background. Gotcha. Uh, going back to last night's Rapid event, Georg, where you were part of the three-way tie, uh, you guys all mutually agreed not to play a playoff and just call it a three-way tie. I believe the last time Fabiana was involved in this exact same scenario, he also agreed to just split everything. Of course, Magnus was one of his two... Uh, uh, potential opponents in a playoff. Do you think that Fabiana was fearing you last night and that's why he agreed to the three-way playoff? Uh, I, I would almost bet that Fabiano had no idea what the prices are or what's <laughs> going on and he probably just didn't care enough about that question. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to ask him about that, but it was getting late. We'll, we'll give him that. Um, Georg, you also used to live in the U.S. when you were attending Webster University. Is there anything that you miss that you're looking forward to, any kind of food or, I don't know, accents or anything that you appreciate in America? Or is there nothing that you missed about living here? No, every place has, you know, some, not only something unique, but many unique aspects to it. Of course, the, culturally, the US and Europe are like two different planets. It's like there's different air that people breathe. Yeah, it's so different, most people don't understand who haven't lived in both places. So, in general, I've always enjoyed variety. I like to travel, so I'm happy to be here. I will also be happy to get back home. And yeah, overall, San Francisco is, from the cities I know in the US, to me the most beautiful. So, of course, it's a joy to be here once in a while. And of course, every team that makes it here has players that are performing well. So, you all played your part to get here. But, Dimitri, in particular, your performance rating was over 2,600. Do you feel like you have to keep playing above your actual rating for the team to be successful here? Yeah, for sure. I shouldn't underperform. Uh, then, probably we have bad chances. But, yeah, I t try to perform well. But, um, but for example, against Amsterdam, uh, I played quite badly, one and a half out of four. And Georg just <laughs> won all four games, and then we still qualified, so <laughs> there are other ways. <laughs> we asked this same question to your semifinals opponent. Last year, it was not known in advance who you would play in the semifinals. Of course, this year it's different. You've known for a while that you're playing the Chongdu Pandas. So both teams have more of a chance to prepare. Do you think that benefits your team more, or do you think it benefits uh, a team that maybe has more time to prepare or something like this? Do you like this rule change? Georg again, being the first board. There is something very particular about preparing for rapid games. I mean, if you spend the morning looking at chess base and trying to remember some lines, I think it may take away some of your sharpness. Like, it's, it's dull to do it in the first place. And, I mean, if you knew that you're in good shape that day, then it actually doesn't matter if you prepare or not, if you play some reasonable opening and just get to play a game, that's all you need. Uh, going back to Dimitri, I believe your chess.com username begins with the two letters I am, which strong young players don't generally title themselves because they think they're just going to make the leap. Are you, do you undersell your abilities a little bit? I mean, you've already made the, the leap to GM, of course. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how that happened. Um, <laughs> I think I, I became an I am. I was very happy, and then I just typed I am in. <laughs> Yeah, since then I'm, I am well, Dimitri. <laughs> half of the chess.com staff is here, so if, yeah, you can just uh, want, say yeah. the word, right? <laughs> yeah, it would be nice, maybe. <laughs> it will be the easiest username change we've ever had. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, and also, for people that are listening carefully, they'll notice Alexander Donchenko, your English is absolutely flawless. We've had a little conversation about this, but it was kind of an accident that you speak such fluent English. Would you like to explain how this came about when you were younger? Um, 
I wouldn't really call that an accident. I, again, uh, I think I told you before, I credit my sister with this, and I'm very grateful to her, because um, it, it, it is, um, it, it is, there, are, there are many situations uh, where it just, it just makes uh, things much, uh, much easier to go about. If you speak the language, if you feel comfortable, uh, and um, okay, uh, just to tell the story, she forced me to take English ca classes with uh, her back when I was seven or eight years old, and I resented her for it. But uh, now, of course, uh, the, the, uh, all, the, uh, all, the, all the value of it is apparent, and uh, well, what can I say? Uh, thank you if you're looking at this. Uh, and I have a question for you. Did the team ever come together and play their matches in one physical location, or were you guys mostly playing from uh, throughout the city? Uh, well, there was one time when uh, at least three of the team members were in the same location. It was the first playoff match against the Amsterdam Mosquitoes. And, uh, well, that was uh, very good. We got some time to do some team event, we had some dinner and so on, so that was really nice. Is one of the nice things about playing online the fact that you can personalize the experience? For example, in an over-the-board tournament, you're usually using the organizer's chess set, the organizer's chair, everything. But at home, you can sit in your chair, listen to your music, have your wine and cheese, listen, you know, do whatever you like, and have your own mouse. Is that kind of one of the appeals of online chess to you? It's certainly nice. I mean, it's very different, and I do not really compare it to playing uh, over the board, but it's, of course, really nice when you can choose yourself. Georg, I asked this question to Fabiano. For part of the day tomorrow, for probably two of the four games, you're going to have your back to the audience. And for the other two, you're going to face the audience. And, of course, the audience is allowed to be a little bit more boisterous and raucous than a normal chess tournament. Which of those two positionings do you think you'll like better? <laughs> You'll get tired of it, but uh, actually, ov over the course of my chess career, I've always been surprisingly um, immune to any outside stimulus. So even when I was a kid and I would be in some time trouble with my opponent and 30 people would be watching after the game, I would be asked, were you bothered by all these people? I didn't even realize they were there. So probably it's not a big deal to me. Paul, are there other things you're going to do for your team tonight to get them prepared for tomorrow's match? Um, nothing too specific. I think we're just going to probably have dinner and then just make sure everyone gets a good night rest. Gotcha. You're the alarm clock. you got to set like three of them. <laughs> I most likely will be, yes. Great. Let's see if the audience has any questions for the Baden Baden Snowballs. WFM Alexander Botez. What impact do you think chess becoming an eSport is going to have on what it's like to be a chess professional? On one hand, you see a lot of very strong chess players who take up streaming, but I mean, many of them are not that popular. And I think um, many popular streamers are chess players we have never heard of before. So it's kind of completely changing the landscape of who can be a professional in chess in, in some way. And it's very interesting to see this unfold because I was quite skeptical at the beginning also because I'm not so much immersed in the U.S. market where, of course, most of the growth happens. And now I'm just curious to see how it develops. And for sure, there's, there is an interesting future ahead. Yeah, there are some 2000s and low 2200s online that have absolutely massive followings and they're making pretty much their entire career out of streaming. So does part of you, Georg, say, all right, chess players are getting paid for what they want to do? Or does part of you also say, this guy's 2000? And he's got all these followers. Why is that? There are many well, professional chess players who are maybe a little bit irritated by that because they may have worked, you know, 10, 20 years to, let's say, be a 2700 and they make some okay living. And then, of course, they, they see what you describe. But it's something different. Yeah, you shouldn't really compare this. I mean, because streaming also is about entertainment and. Uh, to become a very good chess player has nothing to do with entertainment. It's uh, an effort that is focused on yourself. Y you want to perfect yourself, improve yourself. And this is also one of the reasons, I believe, why there are not so many strong players who will be popular streamers, because they're kind of a little bit too introverted for that. Yeah, they're definitely different skills. And Alexandra? Um, I would also like to say something about that. Um, I would 
to say that um, in, ch in chess, uh, people usually, well, st st strong players um, t t try to perform well. It's about their performance, and of course, um, if they do well, they're happy. And the, uh, but um, the, the, the point is that I would say in most other sports, um, entertainment and performance go hand in hand because if uh, s someone uh, th th uh, th throws a ball very far somewhere or I don't know a any sports or is, or is running very fast it's entertaining to the audience um, but in chess uh, it's not it's not so easy to pinpoint uh, what is entertaining about it unless the player is of course uh, able to entertain the audience himself on stream uh, which not so many are at the top level because again this is not this is not what they primarily trained for or if uh, there's, uh, there's good commentary provided, which entertains the audience and sh shows them the performance that the players um, are giving there. And I believe that th these two things, uh, performance and uh, entertainment, they just don't go hand in hand. And it might change in the future if really um, chess is to become uh, more of an eSport than it is now, so that people have to actually do, do, do both things to be successful. You seem to have some thoughts on this, Alexander. I have a question about relationship with the media. Recently, uh, Steve Kerr, who's the coach of the best NBA team, the Golden State Warriors, he actually called out another NBA player for not answering the media's questions. Do you believe that chess players should have to talk to the media? Because as it is the case right now, a lot of top players are allowed to just exit the playing hall and they never really get in trouble for doing so. Mm. I don't know if it should be compulsory, but uh, uh, there's there's definitely a point to it because um, again, ch chess players, s some of them are very introverted, and I um, see you just <laughs> you just turned to the right of the frame there, Dimitri. Well, we'll get to back to that later. Go ahead. What, no, 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 I just uh, I just I just felt something in my neck. We um, can't all be Maurice Ashley. Yeah. We know that. Okay. And um, uh, I believe that it re it really helps people to uh, promote the game because. Um, uh, it, it may it may be uh, quite unfortunate, but uh, a beautiful rook ending that some grandmaster won against some other grandmaster um, d does not get people into the game and does not uh, t t uh, show them how interesting chess can be. But uh, if you t talk about it at the press conference and uh, a lot of people listen to it, then th they might understand what was going on in the people's minds and they uh, will appreciate the, the effort that was put into the game. And your comment about beautiful rook ending was in no way throwing shade at Georg and his game with Magnus. I just want to make sure that's clear, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Another crick in your neck. I got it. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions? I know we've got some fans in the audience because you had some homemade strudel that was given you to you, but anybody else? Ah, we have international master Anna Rudolph with a question. It's Anna and Google Translate. I must have one question on Deutsch. What does it mean for you not only Baden-Baden, but also the whole land of Deutschland to vertreten? I hope that made any sense. I hope so too. I'm not the one to check. <laughs> um, since I've represented my country for the longest, since I'm the oldest here, I have, of course, quite a few thoughts on that. I mean, there are many chess players who are not so happy with their respective chess federations. It's like a recurring theme. I mean, if you put uh, five chess players from five countries together over dinner, eventually they're going to talk about this. But I've always been very proud to represent my country. And uh, to this day, it's like this. So it, it's just a nice feeling when you play not only as a team, but you also feel you, you represent something bigger. Oh, and when it comes to Olympiad sites, do you like really big cities? Or do you like cities that are a little bit smaller where the Olympiad itself is a bigger event for that city? I think I never thought about this question in my life. <laughs> more, more simply, what was your favorite Olympiad you've played in? Uh, it was my first one because it was in Dresden, Germany in 2008. And I was part of the second German team playing the first sport. And early in the event, I beat Ivan Sheparinov, then I made a draw against Magnus Carlsen and Linier Dominguez, and that was one of the best performers on the first board, being a relatively unknown young grandmaster. So, of course, that stays with me forever. Very memorable. That was my first as a journalist, and I can say that Dresden really rolled out the red carpet for chess. Every single storefront had a poster advertising the Olympiad, and I, I felt like it was really a part of the city's culture for those two weeks. Are there other questions for the Baden-Baden team? We have international master Danny Wrench. I hope I said that right. 
I'm just curious how the shirts feel, like on your skin. You feel good? That's, what, that's the answer. That was the correct answer. Yeah, I don't feel them. You so don't even perfect. feel it? That feels so good to me. <laughs> we got the right shirts. We got the right shirts. Okay, I hope don't read anything extra into that. <laughs> um, does anybody else have any questions for the Baden Baden team? All right, well, that concludes. Uh, we had a hand up? No? Got answered? Okay, the shirts feel good. We, we cleared that one up. Good luck tomorrow against the Chengdu Pandas, the 2019 Pro Chess League semifinalists, the Baden-Baden Snowballs. Round of applause.